What do you think it is? What does it sound like to, to you? Hello everyone and welcome to another wonderful podcast. Wonderful podcast. This is the Howling, the official podcast of Hounds of Innsmouth. Hounds of Innsmouth sucks. I'm your host, Ariel Feist. Joining me today is Denny. Hello. Oh, hello. John. Hey. And special guest, Rob. Hey, how you doing? You talking to us or them? No, no. <laughs> the entire internet. <laughs> Waiting on bated breath. <laughs> so much they care. So hard. How's it going, guys? We yeah. love you. Another fine Sunday. Yeah. Not a whole lot going. Got a show later. Overcast. Yeah. Overcast. Love that band. I don't. But whatever. I've never even. Them. Me neither. I just said that anyways. <laughs> They're awesome. So we have a show tonight in Oakland at the Stork Club. By the time this video or video this podcast makes it onto the internet, we'll have probably already played it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. But we do have a show coming up on the twenty first in San Francisco. It'll be at the milk bar. Rob, did you buy a ticket? I got I bought a ticket on credit. Yep. From uh, Mr. Ariel Feist himself. We have tickets. In They're hand, we also have them online. Eleven dollars, uh, fourteen at the door. So we prefer that you don't spend that much money to come see us because we're not that good. <laughs> we'll still have tickets, oh, at, tickets at the door, though, right? Like, I mean, we'll be hanging out with them. Yeah, people can still buy them at the door. Uh, we just we want people to buy early, so then we know what's going on because that's kind of the way this show is going, apparently. Yeah, I've never sold tickets, so I, I, this is a first for me. Make it known. Make it known! Um, can, may I say a fact about the milk bar? Yeah. Um, so, my ex girlfriend, who is 15 years older than me, mm -hmm. our first date. Wait, how old are you? How drink. Wait, how old are you? Uh, this, I was 22. You're 22, so she was. 37. <laughs> You're fucking. It was, it, it was literally the first drink that we ever had together was at the milk bar, and we watched a comedian play that was actually playing at the Hounds of Intimacy show, coincidentally, at Submish. Oh, okay. And now you guys are bringing it full circle, going, <laughs> going to the milk bar, and. Wait, what band know, was it then? Huh? What band? What band played at our show that played at the milk bar too? I think it was the Bad Lettuce show, dude. I think it was Bad Lettuce, and then there were the two comedians. I was on crutches. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then Hounds of Infinite. Hounds of Infinite didn't play at a no, show. No, no, it was Lettuce. just Bad Lettuce. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're a piece of shit. Hey, do you know? Uh, What's that? Am I interrupting no. the podcast? Oh, no. okay. <laughs> I don't know how this is. Interrupting the podcast. <laughs> the podcast. You, it's not like you walked in. <laughs> in the middle so of I've been it. sitting here for a while and talking for a while, but <laughs> is it cool if I keep going or should I just stop? <laughs> so? Um, no, but uh, do you know a kid named Brian Ellison? In Flint Heart. Yeah. 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 He's he, in that instrumental, uh, he like, said rock band. You. I work yeah. with him. I'm working yeah. with him tonight. Tell this piece of shit for not going to the show and having a job. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, John. Because. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're trying to get our friends to actually buy tickets because so far we haven't sold very many. I just need to get cash and then I'll buy a ticket. Yeah, no, it's, it's just really weird having fucking tickets. I mean, I'm used to, like, making people come to the d the day of our show. Right. And just being like, now that I have a car, I'm just like, hey, so I'm outside. What are you doing today? It's like, 
Like, I, I don't have work, uh, you know, I just have to clean a couple things. Okay, cool, well, I'm already on at your door, uh, gonna help you clean your bathroom, and then we can go. Yeah. <laughs> or you can just right, be like, Rob. Just, I will clean 15 bathrooms, <laughs> just go to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it's the holidays. That could be if you're like looking for Christmas gifts, buy a ticket and come to our show. There you go. Merry or Christmas. Or yeah. buy a ticket for your girlfriend. Yeah, that too. Or buy a ticket for your whole family. Yeah. Bring your dog. Do dogs count for tickets? Well, I mean, we're... buy it anyway. <laughs> our name is Hounds of Innsmouth, so it would be kind of remiss for us to not allow dogs at our show. That'd be worse. That'd be really <laughs> funny. Like, Rover needs a spot. It doesn't matter. It's just too bad. Dogs' hearing is way better than ours, and we'd probably ruin them. <laughs> well, it. that's why they, they have ear muffs. They have yeah. dog muffs. Yeah, dog we muffs. need to make the official Hounds of Innsmouth we'll branded put, dog yeah. muffs. We'll just, like, yeah, and they're just socks. They're just, like, <laughs> <laughs> socks. It doesn't even protect their ears at all. We'll the, just poor, use, the poor dogs. We'll just use your brother's socks, since he doesn't oh, wear those God. anymore. <laughs> his white socks. Yeah, be his clear, white socks, like, yeah. Be, he wants his black socks still. He just doesn't yeah. want the white ones. His feet are depressed. He's racist they... against white socks. It's his, fine. His feet are beatniks. Oh, God. Playing bongo drums all the time. <laughs> My mom was, like, kind of drunk at Thanksgiving and yelling at him <laughs> at uh, Thanksgiving because he was like, why are you wearing your black socks outside? Those are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking giving up all of his socks. God damn it. Who's giving up his socks? So I've never played at the milk bar, nor have I been there. I have never been to the milk bar either. Me neither. I went on my first date with the comedian. <laughs> 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 and, and watched a comedian talk about how tall he was and how normal his uh, wiener size was. So he was talking about how awkward it is like to, to have like a regular or large wiener but be so tall and it's just so unproportionate. When some short guy could even be smaller and it would just look so much more massive because he was short. <laughs> it was closer right. to the ground, you know what I mean? Well, it's interesting that the ratio is so important. Yeah. As is with everything. Like like ticket sales. So buy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Coming full circle once again. Yeah. <laughs> buy a fucking ticket right now! Like, comment, subscribe! <laughs> like, comment! Subscribe! <laughs> we were hella drunk at a show that we played at Bobby D's, and we just met these people who were like, oh, no, you guys did a really good set. I really like it. We gave them, like, a demo and stuff. And, like, I was just really drunk in the car, and we're waiting for the the rest of the band to come. And they pass our car again, or they we see them again. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, hey, what's up, guys? Woo, how's Vincent? I was like, like, comment, subscribe! And just, like, hit my head back into my seat. Oh, that yeah. was a great story. Yeah. I was riveted. Were you? Yeah. Good. Ooh. I'm going to need a hard hat for all the rivets that you gave Danny. Yeah. They were so drilling. We went to Bobby D's the other night, right, John? Yeah. Yeah, we went. Did you now? You went to my house? Uh, it's, it's not. I'm it's Bobby not. D. My parents call me Bobby D. Uh, your name's Rob. I know, but Bob is a nickname for Rob. Bobby is a nickname Why for is Rob. that? Huh? I don't know. It's better than, like, John and Jack. That's is so that far. Is really yes, where Jack you, comes from? John is short for, or Jack is short for John. Like, John needs to be any shorter. <laughs> yeah, it's like a microsecond short shorter or what? Uh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it just it's is. It's literally the same. Yeah. yeah. I don't understand it. Isn't John like short for Jonathan anyways? So it's like you're. No, on no, my fucking birth certificate it says John. It just says John. It says John. Okay. Well, he not is the not fuck off, Jonathan. Rob. Yeah, I know. I always not, call you Jonathan. Not Jonathan, not Johnny, or Jackie. Just John. Oh, Jackie. <laughs> God damn it. Just call him Jeremiah. It's fine. <laughs> John <laughs> Jacob Jingle Hammer Smith. His name is my name. Yeah, let's too. just relive. Third, all the way, right, eighth grade. People always shout, there goes John Jacob Jingle Harbors. Buy a ticket. <laughs> $11 event page on Facebook or handsofinstant.com. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh.
So who are we playing with today? A bunch of really metal sounding bands that are all like <laughs> I feel bad hard this to is pronounce. The- Shit. Oh yeah, no, you read them the other day. You were trying to read them out. No, I, I could not. It's no, like I nephilim can't. and shit. I never can. Nephilim. Yeah. Ne- so. Nephilim. Apoth- apothecary hemotoxin nephilim nephilim. That's all it is. It's not nephilim. It's nephilim. Nephilim. Okay. In pharos and then us. That was through memory. So, so in terms of the order, we are first. But uh, I love playing first. Can we just talk about that real quick? I prefer to play earlier in the set rather than later yes like i don't even care if we're better than every other band i would prefer to be first <laughs> in all honesty because yeah. then, then i can drink <laughs> yeah exactly i just think it's just very it's so nerve-wracking just being like okay what are we going on but no yeah i i feel so bad because this is the only the first show one of the first shows that like i haven't like really listened to any of the music or anything beforehand like go and check out everybody's music because just work's been fucking busy and i and hate December. But yeah. yeah like, I've checked out, uh, I think, Nephilim, and uh, I've actually heard of Nephilim before. Maybe it's a name thing, but they sounded okay. And I think Apothecary they sound pretty good. But we'll see. I'm ready. Oh my. I kind of just want to do this show and kind of not have to worry about anything for another couple weeks. Really yeah. Cool. 21st is going to be cool, though. I feel like I feel like I can get there early and walk down hate and probably convince a couple people to come. That'd be good. And I'm honestly down to have... Because I think I get paid near there, too, and just, like, put a couple... Like, 20 bucks into it or something like that and mm-hmm. just be like, look, I put in discounts, so there's $5 off on, like, four tickets or something like that. Right. <laughs> okay. All right, Rob conversation turns towards Rob. Everyone <laughs> stares at Rob. What does Rob do? What does Rob do? So, John, what have you been playing lately? Video games. Oh, I just beat Arkham Asylum. Yeah. No, it took like me that. fucking forever. Huh? What the hell is that? Arkham Asylum? Yeah. Batman game? The whole... The thing is... What like the hell they, is Arkham? Uh, back in. Is that a new city or something? Yeah. So it's yeah. not Gotham anymore. No, it's in Gotham. It's, Gotham. it's a Gotham. city within a city. Yeah. Is it? Yep. And there's an asylum named after it. Yeah. So there's Arkham Asylum. But the whole thing is that you bring Joker back into the prison and he escapes and takes control of the prison and whatnot. So you have to go fight him and whatnot. And battle everybody. But Joker, I just fucking Joker's beat it. Joker's a fucking dick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> sure is. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, it was cool. Problem was just like, I remember the first couple times I would just be drinking constantly, mm-hmm. and then just go over and play the game kind of drunk and be like, ah, oh, this is hell fun, I'll fuck kick guys' ass. And you just, once you do so many combos, you, he'll do like certain ones in slow motion or stuff like that. So, oh, oh, oh! But uh, the problem was that I would be drinking so constantly in the game, go, get really far, stop, and not play for a while, and then I'd come back to it sober and be like, wait, what was I supposed to be doing? And, like, have to wander around for 25 minutes and just figure out what I had to do next. But yeah, really fun game. So, do you feel like you could Batman now? No, I totally cannot Batman. <laughs> I need, like, half of those, <laughs> all of that equipment that he uses and a lot more time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I have Arkham City, so that's next on your list. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I didn't even know about Arkham City. Good. Just the prison, the uh, asylum breaks out and everybody gets into the city, or what? No, no, it's a different thing. The oh. Arkham City is like this totally made up thing they made for the game, but it's pretty cool. It's just basically it makes it more free roaming, so it's like Grand Theft Auto, but, <laughs> but it's Batman. Batman. <laughs> Excuse me, I need your car. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't steal any cars. He just uh, glides around and fucks dudes up in the street. But can you do it, random people? You. Certainly can. I mean, most yeah. of, most of the people in there are criminals, so, and you're crippling every single one of them as Batman. <laughs> this is a, it's like one of the jokes that I saw on the internet one time, where it's just like Arkham City, the story of Batman. It just shows Batman going around beating up dudes and then leaving, and they're all like a mangled mess <laughs> afterwards. Like, at least he didn't kill me. <laughs> I'll never walk again, though. <laughs> Wow, what a great dude. Yeah. 
cool. I have Arkham Origins, which was another game, but it was developed by a different team, so I heard that it was just okay for some reason, because the other ones. Oh, and then there's a new one coming out. Already? Well, yeah, because Arkham Asylum was released, like, five years ago. Oh, so. I, I didn't even look at the date on that one. Yeah. You're playing catch-up. Yeah. But we all will be, because I have a shit ton of games that I still have not played. Ooh, we have to play, we have to do, uh, I don't know what it's called when we play video games and talk over it. Uh, just a playthrough. A playthrough, yeah. The commentary. Yeah, commentary on a playthrough. I was doing that yesterday with Rage, which is a first-person shooter. I like Rage. Oh yeah, you played that one? I played Rage. I, I played the old one, though, on um, uh, Rage Expendable on the PC way back in the day. Oh, hmm. shit. So, tell me more. Um, it, was, <laughs> it was a dude fucking who would just like, it was like a, from like a bird's eye. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was so, it was like, it was like old shit. Okay, like, yeah. It wasn't like, it, it was before so eight bit and that person. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. I, I feel like I know what game that is, but I don't it, really It's remember. more like, it's more like uh, fucking 32, 32 bit. Okay, yeah. But you played the new one, too? No. No? Okay. The new one's just... It was made by the guys who made Doom. So it's a first-person shooter. Yeah. Yeah. That one is uh, just okay. Not great. The Rage is better, in your opinion. Uh, the old one? No, the new one. No, I don't think it's better, because I can't really give you an opinion. I don't re I bit vaguely remember the old Rage that you're talking about, but I don't think that I remember enough to give a valid opinion. I don't think the new one's anything special. I think it's a decent shooter, but that's about it. But I'll play through it. Provide commentary about how annoyed I am by lens flares. Lens flare. So dumb. Is this what I think it is? The luchador mask? Yeah. Yeah. Can I wear <laughs> it? You may. It's dusty and it may strangle you if you're not careful, so. Okay. Just be aware. Did Henry wear that for one show and he, then he took it off? He took it off immediately because it was strangling him, and that's the reason why. Like that was I got that when I worked at GameStop, and it was like one of the extra things that came because there was a Luchador game that was being released that year, and they were going to package that in for pre-orders, but then because of the fact that uh, people were kind of choking on them, <laughs> because it like wraps around right here. And then it's like you can't really breathe very well. Oh, that's fine. I can breathe. You just have a smaller head than me. <laughs> now, you have a big head, huh? Yeah. What's your hat size? Uh, one size doesn't fit. What? Eight. I have like an extra large head. I have no idea what the size is. It's like a twelve. Eight's the or largest. Something. Because. I'm nine and a half. Because Ariel doesn't fucks with fitted hats because that's oh. for wiggers. <laughs> <laughs> But mine, uh, mine is seven and three eighths to seven and a half. Just as a reference, if any of you pod listeners out there <laughs> would like to buy me a hat <laughs> or buy a ticket, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Just send it to PO Box one eight hundred. I don't give a fuck. The PO Box turned into a phone number. Yeah. Yep, I did. <laughs> <laughs> So, Rob, since you're a guest on our show. Yes. <laughs> what do you do in your spare time, motherfucker? That's legal. What do I do on my <laughs> spare time that's legal? Uh, -huh. uh Help well, the children of the community. <laughs> I, well, before that, I go and, I go and bait. And then... Natch. Um, huh? Natch. What, what's that? Short for naturally. Okay, sorry, I couldn't talk with this lever mask. <laughs> this fucking luchador. Um, I see what Henry was getting at when he said uh, when he said it was strangling him. But on my spare time, um, you know, I I like to go like if I'm by myself, I like to go like you know ride my bike for fucking until I fall down. Yeah, which you then, did the other night. Yeah, which. I, <laughs> Well, I was saying, I was saying that uh, hypothetically fall down, but yes, I, I also ride my bike until I fall down on a rainy night on Efren's birthday. 
and say right before, no, nah, man, I don't fall down. Oh, <laughs> it comes <yeah>. back limping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did, I did call that I wouldn't fall, and then I fell. Um, did you also break your, uh, or sprain your ankle at, like, one of our practices? No, it was actually, out, I sprained my ankle in front of your house on 4th of July. Okay. <laughs> and um, I was really drunk. Charlie was here. I remember Charlie was here, and uh, I fucking I was walking down the stairs, and I just fucking flint, and then I was like laying down out on the curb out there, and uh, it was bad. <laughs> anyway, I went the next morning to get it checked out. So it was this ankle right here. That ankle. And for you listeners, it's this is the right. <laughs> Still has to pat his leg to make sure that everybody understands. <laughs> Did you guys hear it? <laughs> I'm patting my right. It sounds different from my left. So, um, the girl that I'm talking to, I said, um, here, would you like me to quote it? Please. Um, so, regarding the song Log Jam. I asked by that19.com. By that19.com, precisely. Um, we are not affiliated with them in any way. I just decided to throw that in there. Yes. <laughs> I, I think their shit is funny. Um, so we were talking about how, like, you know, when my when I shave and then my shit grows back in, it, like, sandpapers or fucking lip off. Uh-huh. And um, I said, I'm going to sandpaper your face off and then change the subject. By the way, when you get the chance to see to see YouTube... I have a straight up song to show you. It expresses my masculinity and pr pretty accurately as well as my feelings for you. <laughs> it's called Log Jam. <laughs> <laughs> and right now she is watching it as we speak. All right. Uh, so about to hear, hear a good reaction. I expect updates. Yeah, <laughs> you will get an update. <laughs> updates. Well, I do have to leave in eight minutes. All right. uh... It's okay, we're prepared. Uh, <laughs> mentally and emotionally, we're prepared for your departure. Good, because I will be back. Okay. Uh, yeah, but we're playing the show. I will be back to give you the money that I owe you for the ticket that I bought. Oh, because you're a good dude. I am. <laughs> 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 you. He's a horrible person. <laughs> but he still bought a ticket, so he's better than the masses. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> Support local true. music, folks, seriously, on For that real. serious tip, man. I fucking, you know? Yeah, no. Drive, drive the band to a show and, and <laughs> get it for free. <laughs> you know what I mean? That is what happens. That happens anymore. <laughs> man, my perspective is, while you're young, just fucking do all of that shit. Get involved in every band that you know that you just want to fucking help out. Because yep. it pays dividends in the long run. It doesn't even matter if they make it big or whatever. You're still getting... Music for free, essentially. Friends for life. Yeah. And. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Whatever. Yeah. While you're young, also do do um, lots of hardcore drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Tons of cocaine. <laughs> so that so that you can look like a deadbeat when you're older. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how you want to look at the job interview. And then tell your kids to just put on a jam session. Yes. Just jam, jam, jam. Oh, God. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That was with the, the dad band that we saw the other night. That was kind of the impression I got was all those guys did hardcore drugs as kids. Yeah. And then, like... Never hey, made it in their band. Right. Like, like, got back together. Well, like, their practice sessions just involved doing drugs and <laughs> getting blitzed out of their mind and not actually making music and then after all the rehabilitation they finally like went into their garage and started making some sort of music but it was just like they're all as <laughs> post coked up as Ozzy Osbourne so it doesn't fucking matter <laughs> it's two covers man yeah. they're good they're on point with all of their covers yeah they were was, they were fine actually so speaking of local bands we should just mentioned the the last show that we played at because those bands were pretty good. Dude, fucking Ion, Ion, oh, Mohicans, and Wild Hunt. Oh god, dude. I believe, uh, fucking Mike was fucking over everybody that night, though. Yeah, the microphone was a piece of shit. I, I was mean, talking it, about Mike. 
Well, <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I thought you were talking about. Mike's such an asshole. <laughs> Mike, we even know Mike, like Michael Sessa, we know. Oh, Mike is an asshole. Anyway. But he's not Mike. He's no. just, that's Sessa. All right, whatever. Nah. <laughs> Yeah, we had a lot of technical difficulties, and so did everybody else that night. It was really funny going over to the bar and be like, hey, the mics aren't working up there. Uh, I think it's trying to do it for a little while now, and it's not doing anything. He's like, oh, well, they'll figure it out. And I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, can I have a beer, please? <laughs> but uh, then this other guy just like ran up immediately after that. So that was cool. He really fucked up uh, the second band after us. Their set it was uh, Wild Hunt. I would have liked to have heard was, the vocals. Was Wild Hunt after us, or were they no, third? No, Mohicans came second, and then third was Wild Hunt. But Mohicans, their their microphone didn't cut out very much. He he just kind of dropped it every once in a while. Like, the cord fell out every, yeah. every few minutes or so. But for the most part, it didn't fuck up their set. But Wild Hunt, it was not doing it. But that was partially because they had, like, the fucking reverb turned up to the max. <laughs> Rob, shut up. <laughs> Um, no, Mohicans were hella cool, like, they were, like, the kind of hardcore that I like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, it was, like, hardcore with groove metal. That recording the whole time? God damn it. God damn it. Yeah, Mohicans are really cool, uh... Their guitarist was really funny. Oh, yeah. That guy's super creepy. I can't remember his name. I don't think we ever introduced ourselves to each other, but like I was looking across the bar. This guy's got huge glasses. Oh, yeah, I remember huge that. Huge glasses, and I'm looking down the ways, and I'm looking for one of my friends, and then all of a sudden I come across him, and he's going like, just staring blankly at me, like, with his mouth open, and be like, and I'm just like, uh, okay, and like kind of like look off and start talking to like the person next to me, and he's still in my peripheral peripherals. I can see him going, <laughs> eyes like wide open, and the, he had really bad vision, so his uh, his eyes were like super bigger with his glasses on. <laughs> so it's really creepy. Yeah. Creepy. I don't think you realize how creepy you look. You're creepy. Oh. 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 Yeah. Slow poke. You look like a Jesus <laughs> this is an hobo apple. lumberjack. Jesus hobo lumberjack. You're a hobo. Um, I've been a hobo for years and I make it great. Look at him. He's a hobo oh. sapien. <laughs> it's wonderful. Timber, you fell into my heart. Buy a ticket. <laughs> 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 Copyrights to that song belong to Vat 19. <laughs> <laughs> Covering all bases. I don't want to get sued! <laughs> no one wants to get sued! We like think these guys are like super cool dudes and they're like, no, fuck you! <laughs> you two seconds of our song, we're suing your asses. Yeah, for real, man. Hey man, everybody starts out cool and then something happens. Yeah, like John. Fuck <laughs> you! <laughs> so if you like Let's say you hey, time said issue. that uh -huh. time issue. on the on the cast, uh -huh. and you're like, yeah. Hypothetically, not realistically, that I just said that. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, <laughs> you, you just realistically just said it. Uh huh. Does that clear you of any like copyright things? No, <laughs> but we're we're doing it anyways. <laughs> 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 it doesn't clear me of jack shit. It's just basically like we say it, we acknowledge it. And then that's supposed to sort of deter them from wanting to pursue legal action because we are aware of the fact that they own the rights to those songs. Right. We love you, Bat 19. We do, actually. We love you so come. hard. Like, I actually own of several of your items. products because of your marketing and advertising. Okay. I could have gotten the same products from Amazon. That's great. But I chose to buy from Bat 19. Which ones? Uh, the Das Horn, Das Boot. Sick. So. Yeah, I saw the boot. Or the horn, no, uh, no, they're both in the kitchen, but... I don't know, like, I I hate commercials and I hate marketing so much. Like, I feel like I could be good at it because I'm creative in the writing aspect of things, so I feel like I could get that job and do it, but I fucking would hate 
doing that shit because I don't like. Because you know, you yeah, know that people are gonna see. Like it. the whole point is that you're trying to kind of convince people to buy the shit. And one, I don't like fucking begging for shit. And two, I don't like lying to people. So that's kind of what marketing is. So with Bat Nineteen, it seems like they're doing that, but they're doing it in a fun way that is fucking entertaining at the same time. They so it's believe like even the product. Yeah, and it's like we're just gonna have fun and do this. Make a five minute commercial. That is has nothing to do with the product that we're selling. But by the way, buy this product because <laughs> they just flat out say like buy it now at bad 19com They just fucking say it at the end of every commercial. But it doesn't matter because they put like several weeks worth of production time and money into like this five minute video skit about these guys making a video for this ten foot long gummy python. <laughs> and they're like they're acting as characters like these two guys who are acting to be British who are trying to make a commercial for Americans so they they don't understand the culture at all and like <laughs> even though these guys are Americans like they put so much effort into their fucking commercials I have to reward them in some way they have a lot of gummy products they do that's how they get by John if you're not trying to shoot you cut it right look at the bottom I'll fucking do it remember, <laughs> remember the rapper Tai My Shoe <laughs> there's a rapper named Tai My Shoe yeah remember no, I don't. I never listened to rap music after the nineties. He he was um he he was uh, can I quote him? Yeah, you can quote him. We're not using any of his fat beats. Want some of my jammer sour? I'll give it to you now. Who like my chopstick? Hit you in the dick with my little ass dick. Yellow. If you wanna see me eat jello, I never seen nothing like you before. I can kick you. Higher than you can kick me. Jack I can yeah. kick you way up into a tree. Who wants to taste of my boo long chi? Ho ha ho ha ho chi chi. Everybody in the phone book named Chang. Want to see my wang? Never good going, hit the gong with the bang. Ah? So everybody want to see me throw a fireball. But that's not right, not in real life, you will fall. Down and break a leg. Everybody want to see me break an egg. But I don't. But I like fried rice. And I got lice. Ching chow woo ching wang wang white. That ain't nice. Four fortune cookie. I always said you twice. Delivery is free, but not from me. I always charge a dollar fifty. Fifty-five. Wanna see me go? Gah! Hit you with the lie. Gah! Oh, when I get you, do a shit, take a shit. Something. After you eat my shit, kung fu. Want my buffet? You fucking gay. Oh, why low? Hit you with the hay. Hit you in the balls. Something. Only Americans like that sauce. So tying my shoe, thanks for sitting in on this podcast with us. <laughs> when did you determine that you were a racist bastard? <laughs> it's from CKY, right? It's from CKY. <laughs> who we also love and um, endorse. We have nothing we to endorse them with. <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> we endorse them with that. Yeah, that's true. So CKY, have you guys ever heard the uh, the Christmas song by them? Yes, I have. That's that's pretty much the only song I actually really like by them. It's just the Christmas song, because <laughs> it's just. What was the Christmas song? It's uh, like, it's just basically like Jingle Bells or whatever. But <laughs> Santa Claus is coming to town, one of those ones, but it makes it hella dark or whatever. And you just you just hear Santa at the end, just go. Shut the fuck up and get back to work! <laughs> the fucking slave driver and shit. That sounds way better. Uh, it's Skeletor versus Beast Man, of course. <laughs> that one was good. That was good. I like, I like any He-Man reference. <laughs> Masters of the Universe, fantastic the movie. The whole fucking movie. So need ridiculous. to watch that again. I haven't watched that in a while. Have you ever seen Masters of the Universe, the live-action He-Man movie? I have not. With Dolph Lundgren. <sighs> and, uh, Blu-ray. Yeah, I have it on Blu-ray. And it's actually Courtney it's like Cox. It's from the 90s that? or 80s? 80s. It's very good. That sounds hella good. It's... Can you keep that on deck for the next time Absolutely, I sir. We will yeah. we'll make an event out of it. I want to make a drinking game out of it. Oh, there are plenty. Yeah, yeah <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> we will I'll play. We make plenty of drinking game rules around this house. And one for that movie is anytime Skeletor starts speaking a dramatic monologue. Because it happens several times. Yeah. Anytime that you feel like a uh, he man should be saying something but isn't, you should drink. Because he doesn't. He has like probably eight lines in that movie, because of the fact that they got Dolph Lundgren to play <laughs> that part. Do you know who Dolph Lundgren is? No. So he he was a big '80s action star, uh, but he was kind of like if Jean Claude Van Damme 
or Arnold Schwarzenegger were not available, you got Dolph <laughs> Lundgren. Because yeah. he, was, he was buff, but he also had like an, a very thick, I believe he's from Did Sweden. Did he have a gap? No, he, he didn't have a gap, I don't think. Did you ever see Rocky IV? Yeah. The big Russian dude. I must break you. Oh, yeah. That's Ivan Dolph Lundgren. Drago. Yeah, oh, Ivan yeah. Drago is Dolph Lundgren. Okay, yeah. So, that, that was He-Man? That's he, He-Man. All right, I'm, dude. Down, I'm right? In. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Skeletor is what makes that movie, though. Like, just every time he shows up, it's an event. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> He's hella dramatic. I forget the actor who played him. Uh, I forget his name, but he just hams it up so much because it's another example of an actor whose grandchildren really liked the source material and asked him to play the part. And so he's like, all right, I'll play it. And then he saw the role, he's like, this is so dumb, <laughs> but I'm going to have a good time with this, and just fucking goes... He went all out. He goes all so. out. You ever see uh, this live-action Street Fighter movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme? Oh, I so did great. a long time ago. Yeah. I don't remember Do anything you... about it. Okay. Well, M. Bison was played by Raul Julia. It was actually his last movie made before he died, uh-huh. and he was uh, Gomez from the Adams Family, so the father figure. Very kind of, I mean, especially because he was dying of cancer while that movie was happening. So he's super skinny. And M. Bison from Street Fighter is supposed to be this hella buff dude or whatever. But he's just fucking nuts in that movie. Like, he saves that thing. It would not be watchable if it wasn't for him. But he's just like, and from heaven, I fell. Like, fucking, (laughs) holy shit. Do you have that one on deck, too? I might. I'm not sure if I do. See if you do. It's because I will sit here like I'm I will sacrifice yeah. a Friday night out on the town <laughs> just to sit here and fucking. We can come up with plenty of drinking games for both of those movies too. I'd like to see him sober first. Well, oh, okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's your choice. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know I had a choice. <laughs> so, any word on uh, the logjam repercussions? Huh? Your girl. She look, have a reaction. She said she loved it. <laughs> All right. By the way, I, I forgot to update you. No, that's okay. We but won't. she said, haha, that was great. And then I just sent a cat with hearts as eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. But I am seven minutes past my time to leave. All right, sir. Because I have to go. Goodbye, Rob. Later. I hate you guys. Bye, Aaron. Rob. Thanks for sitting in. Thank you for letting me be part of your podcast. Thank you for buying a ticket. Take it easy. I love the above hugs. Those are great. Can we do one? (laughs) God, it's so creepy. Start humping. Legs right near your dick. Get out of here. Leave. No, you're not. Trust me, it's in me. So. (laughs) Got pushed in, huh? Oh, it's just really embarrassing. I don't want to talk about it. Sounds right. like a personal problem. Well, Bye, Rob. Rob. Bye. With Rob's departure, we'll take a break. And here's a song from the Wild Hunt and from <laughs> Oakland.
<laughs> so since we were on the subject of movies before Rob left, uh, let's continue talking about it. We were watching Fifth Element last night. Oh, hell yeah. Always a classic. Love it. Everyone's seen it in this house at least probably 20 times. Yep. So easily quotable. And then after that, uh, we watched another movie. Drive fucking angry. Yeah, Drive Angry starring Nicolas Cage. I love him. Oh, such a ridiculous fucking movie. <laughs> it, it really felt like the legitimate Ghost Rider. Oh, God, yeah. Like, it wasn't Ghost Rider, but the theme and everything around it felt like Ghost Rider. So it might as well have been Ghost Rider Part 3, or I believe this came out like between 1 and 2, so maybe it was 1 and a half. Regardless. Fantastic movie. Fantastically terrible. Yeah. I just wish I was able to see the whole time. Fuck. Ah, I'm such an asshole. I feel like that was a 3D movie in theaters. No, I definitely got that impression, certainly by the end, with the number of different shots that they did. Especially with, like... 3D bullets. Yeah. The 3D bullets, the fucking... There were several shots down the barrel of a gun from that perspective or whatever, so... It was definitely a 3D movie at some point or another. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck? Like, I have to see... I'm just picturing seeing Nicolas Cage's hair in 3D. Maybe it yeah, his better. hair was intense in that movie. It was pretty ridiculous. It's like all yeah. weird blonde hair plug shit going on there. <laughs> but the, the only thing that I can really downgrade it on is that there was no Nicolas Cage freak out in it. Really? Yeah, that was what we were waiting for. It, there were a lot of those classic moments of him saying like one-liners that were really corny and terrible. But, yeah. Uh, so, so it made up for that, uh, but no freak out, so we were a little disappointed by that. Yeah. Which is not that movie, strangely enough, called Rage, uh, was a really boring movie, so it was shitty on all levels as opposed to a good way. But that one at least had one or two good Nicolas Cage freakout moments that were over the top. You guys yeah. remember that one, right? Where his daughter got killed by the, oh. the bullet to the head. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The big Not twist the... was... We won't spoil it for those of you who are really dying to see the Nicolas Cage phenomenon movie called Rage, but uh, it's on Netflix, I think, still. That fucking scene where, like, they're at the funeral... And, like, the mob boss comes over and talks to him. He's like, I don't want you, like, pursuing any of this stuff. Yeah. Don't want you doing it. The movie was just bad on a lot of levels. The only redeeming thing was just kind of the few Nicolas Cage freakout moments. And then that one part where they were supposed to be beating up his friend. And it there's, like, a wide-angle shot of a dude sort of punching him. But not really, because you see that there's like a foot gap between his fist and the body. So it's like, you couldn't uh, even like get close in your punches to make it look sort of real. You had to say like, oh no, we'll finish that in post. Like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> Looking... Move me closer. <laughs> <laughs> so they say that every sneeze is like a tenth of an orgasm. It is uh would you say that that's correct there, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just maybe maybe more for me. <laughs> ah, fuck yeah! <laughs> God damn it! All over your face! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it feels amazing. Yeah, we watched that movie. Did we watch anything else last night? Do we go from fit? No, we watched Batman Returns. That was the other movie that we watched. Oh, watch. fuck. God. A movie that everybody kind of was like, oh, yeah, I haven't seen this in a long time. Because, eh. Yeah. It's a piece of shit. It's not a piece. Eh. It's not terrible. I think it's a piece of shit. I remember being a kid, and when that movie first came out, everybody was like, oh, this is the best one so far. Yeah, no, it, it was. Like we were saying before, they gave Tim Burton full control over this movie, right? Yeah. yeah, it was the first Batman movie that he did, the 1989 one. He was a little more subdued because Warner Brothers had kind of a tight grip on the production of the movie. Yeah. But uh, with Batman Returns, after 
the last one made them so much money, they're like, just do whatever you want, it'll make us more money. And it did, but it was also way darker and fucking more Tim Burton-esque. Yeah. It felt like a lot of the shit was just Joker-esque. Yeah, a lot of stuff that... that fucking Penguin. Yeah. Like, all the henchmen were clowns, which just was like... It just felt like Tim Burton was trying to make up for lost material in the last movie. <laughs> yeah. But... I don't know, I don't think that movie's terrible, but I remember being a kid, everybody thought it was, like, the best one, and then I didn't watch it again until I was, like, in high school, and I was like, ah, it's not as good as I think everybody was making it out to be. Yeah. But it's still better than the Batman movies that followed. Oh, yeah. Like, Batman Forever is, I, I feel, a more entertaining movie Yeah. for its laughability. That's with Robin, right? Yeah, that's when Robin first shows up, and that's with Jim Carrey as the Riddler and Tommy Lee Jones as forgettable Two Face because it's really about Jim Carrey. Yes, yeah. he he's was the, he's the better one. Well, he he just got way more focus, and I think Jim Carrey was like this was post Ace Ventura two and Dumb and Dumber and all that stuff, so he was just like on top of the world in terms of the amount of money he was making at yeah. the time. But and Val Kilmer was Batman in that movie. Like, fucking Val Kilmer. Uh, but probably the only movie where the uh, the main female interest I thought was attractive in any of those uh, Batman movies, because who was it? So the eighty nine one was Kim Basinger. Basinger. Bas Bas Bas. Bas the second movie was Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. And she was attractive, but we already had this conversation. I'll just say it here: was that she's kind of like the Cameron Diaz of, like, the 80s and 90s in that she kind of appeared in a number of different movies. They always kind of played her up as this really beautiful woman, but I didn't feel like she was really very beautiful, except for, like, maybe just kind of the weird, creepy way that she was in fucking Batman Returns. Yeah. Just because it was, like, she was being all sexual and shit as Catwoman, and it's like, okay, this is cool, but, like, in Scarface, when she's a cokehead, she looks fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, that was the role that got her started in films anyway, so... Yeah. Uh, but then, Nicole Kidman was in Forever, and I think it, Nicole Kidman is very attractive. Yeah. And then, in Batman and Robin, you had Alicia Silverstone as Batgirl, yeah, and... She's, like, okay. Yeah, but ultimately forgettable. Yeah. And then you had also Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy, and I don't find Uma Thurman attractive myself. I a lot of people I know do. She's but kind of. Just not for me. Yeah, I don't think she's attractive either, and I hate it when people tell me I look like her. <laughs> <laughs> you look just like Uma Thurman. Do people tell you that? Like you guys why? should dress up as the, as you know Uma Thurman. And fucking John Travolta from Pulp Fiction. Um, he looks like the penguin. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Fuck the you. the new Batman movies had the same issue with their female leads. They had Katie Holmes and Maggie Gyllenhaal, and then I thought I think Anne Hathaway is attractive, but. Yeah. It's not like we have high standards in this house. No, no, to to totally low, non-existent standards. I look in the mirror every day. What do I have to live with? <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> You're in this category too. What? You don't want to be associated with Uma Thurman? Yeah, you're dating the penguin. Yeah. <laughs> been watching or playing, John? I've just been listening to a lot of Ninja Sex Party lately. Yeah? <laughs> like, they're really amazing. I'm actually considering buying their stuff, but not because I can always watch it on YouTube. Yeah, that's true. And I think that's, like, the only place I'd really like. Well, they but make I, money off of that anyways, so yeah. it's not like you're stealing from them. Exactly. I, mean, I don't know. I kind of want to download... I want, like, a physical CD. I don't want to download them. That'd yeah. be awesome. Their tunes are pretty catchy, and I appreciate Danny's sex bangs. 
the writing. Yeah. Because it, it so is great. pretty clever sometimes. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I feel like half of the stuff, like, the um, they have next to you, or they have, like, this huge, like, dan- all these girls dancing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I feel like they went to a dancing studio and went, hey, we want to put on a put on a music video. Can you figure out a dance number for the song? Uh, we'll advertise your thing in it at some point, and right. all your girls get to be in the video. Yeah. And, That's probably. Yeah. Yeah. But, like a good plan. Yeah, they're definitely just getting paid for that, though. That's fucking amazing. Danny Sex Bang just gets to hang out at home, do game grubs, and fucking ninja sex party. <laughs> it's a pretty good gig to be able to play video games and then go and make music and get paid for all of it. Yep. Pretty sure that like the Game Grumps and Ninja Sex Party like combined is probably like a six figure income for him every year. <laughs> oh, and Starbomb. Right, Starbomb too. They're doing that as well. I'm pretty sure there's a couple other ones. Uh-huh. We just don't know about them. Well, like uh, was it PewDiePie, uh, the most subscribed guy on YouTube? It is really. I didn't yeah. know about that. Yeah, he has the most subscriptions of anyone on YouTube, I believe, currently. Yeah, my um, sister really likes. He makes more than four million dollars a year through just doing YouTube videos. Wow. Oh my god! We need to stop watching his videos. <laughs> Why would we stop watching them? I stop watching him because I actually find him annoying. But I think he's pretty. He's pretty entertaining. My sister likes to watch him because she thinks he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, then fucking fly to Norway and steal him from his girlfriend and pug. Yeah. Good. He was on South Park recently. Yeah. Or at least they were making fun of him. Yeah. Yeah, He's in everything. It's kind of weird how a single person can get so popular just from doing what he does. But, hey, that's what we're hoping to do. Buy our tickets. (laughs) Single entity. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fucking awesome. Just by doing sketches and advertising beer. Mm Mm-hmm. Like how Johnny Knoxville went onto the Late Show and just wore like a, I can't remember what uh, he wore. He wore like a beer shirt or something like that, mm-hmm. and they just like showed up at his store and gave him a ton of free beer. Like thank you, that was awesome. And then he when he went on the second time, he just took his uh, his uh, sweater off and it said uh, like Direct's condoms or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> He's like I'm looking for another sponsor right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea, especially do it for like the local brews. Make some money for the, yeah. the local breweries. Like right now, <laughs> I'm drinking Murphy's Imported Stout, drought style, uh, <laughs> established in 1856, brewed using only natural ingredients. And it's uh, it's very dark. It tastes similar to Guinness, which is why I like it. I don't know if it's actually this like the same company, or <laughs> parent company or whatever, but I love me some thick Irish beer. <laughs> We should do that, do like videos of us like trying local breweries beers while blasting our like newer song in the background and headbanging to it and yelling over it and being like, this is blah, 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 blah. And just like the amount of headbanging is our rating system or whatever. <laughs> just the level of how thrashed up our faces and hair look. <laughs> we give it a <laughs> just light headbang. <laughs> if we really like it, you just like just see hair everywhere. Scars and wounds from hitting your head on the table. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of actual like videos of reviews of beers, just people doing that shit. So that's what we plan to do, right? We plan to do a lot of different videos and reviews and interviews and stuff like that. Because I've been working on the website and the blog. I'm so down. So you want to do what, interviews with the bands and stuff, video. That would be stuff. really cool to do. Should and just be like, hey... Bring like your phone tonight or whatever, and just be like, "Hey, just ask him a quick question or whatever. What do you think about the set? How did you enjoy the show so far? What, what's your band's name? What are you?" I don't know if my phone can record that much. <laughs> it's like all cracked and shit. And they're like, "Are you sure video is gonna work on that, bro?" You can use mine. I'll bring my camera and see if we can get somebody to talk. But I have to buy somebody a beer. You don't even have to get them to talk for more than a few minutes. Just be like, hey, you know, we're, we're making a video blog. We're trying to get our name out there as well as other bands' names out there. So if you'd like to 
feature you. <laughs> Are you willing to answer like three questions? We only have to ask him like two or three questions. He'll be like, yeah, that's cool. Thanks. Have to have a couple beers. <laughs> it's just it's always weird just talking to new people and doing stuff like that. Cause like I asked I asked Ion about that. I, I said like you know. I kind of want to do a video blog talking about either the shows coming up or after the show and how it went. And I was like, it'd be really cool to have you guys on there and like, you know, maybe like play a little bit of your music at the end or something like that. And like maybe have you like air guitar to it. He's like, yeah, I, don't, I don't know how we feel about that. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to the guys. But yeah, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure they'd be down to, down to, uh, just come over and talk about stuff. Go Fred. What the fuck do you want? It's hungry. You're hungry? Yeah. What the fuck? We ate like an hour ago. Yeah, like when I got home. You guys had just eaten. I did something today. <laughs> Disgusted Ariel. Yay. Now you can drive me to the show. I can yeah. throw up all over our fans that won't be there. Because it's Oakland. Yeah, I don't really know how many people, Even my cousin who lives at MacArthur Station. Will, like, not at MacArthur Station. <laughs> <laughs> Just sleeping in a sleeping bag there, huh? <laughs> That'd be even more of a reason of, like, why didn't you come? Is he the one that's old enough to go? Huh? Is he old enough? Yeah, yeah he's, he's, no. he's, he's over 21. 21. Who was it that you were talking to that you kept mentioning that, uh, it's like, oh, we had a couple shows? Oh, but you're, you're not old enough to come oh, to the Ivan. bars. Oh, Ivan. Ivan, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Ivan and, uh, you know, the following of No Man's Land, <laughs> I ran into Dom at Target. Ah, does he work there? Yeah, he works there. <laughs> it's so funny, because, like, they were all like uh, 16 and 17 and they didn't have any jobs when they were in that band. Yep. And just all of them kind of like, I guess school interfered or whatever. Like yeah. Taylor went to fucking Spain and all that stuff. So everybody's like kind of departed and everybody has jobs. Yeah. Now. It's as really soon funny. As you stop them. making music, then you get a career and, you know, you make a family, you ruin your life. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like Gabe is working at Big Mouth Burger in Mayhill. Oh, really? Yeah, we saw him the other day, and he was wearing glasses, and I didn't really know it was him because he had his short hair, and I was like, is that, is that, is that Gabe from No Man's Land? And Danielle's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. I was like, is it? I was like, ah, it is. Why do those guys have to all cut their hair, man? I don't know. Fucking, maybe look at this guy him. with the long hair. Yeah. Well, maybe it helped him get jobs. Probably. That's probably what it was. Yeah. If I can put some gel in it, fuck. The same thing I heard from everybody else that's older than me. Like, oh, you're going to try and get a job with long hair? I'm like, yeah. I shouldn't Doesn't have to cut it. If, if they're not willing to hire me for that reason, I don't want to work there anyway. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> but the funniest part was, um, Taylor cut his hair. The drummer of No Man's Land. He, he cut it and he was just like, I think he was like probably one of the third people that, in the group that cut it or something like that. Yeah. We were like, ah, oh, everybody like was getting mad about it. And then uh, a couple months later, like, Danielle had her accident, and we were in the hospital, and we're all in the waiting room, and I'm waiting with her whole family. I don't have anybody else really to talk to, so we're just striking random conversations. And we got to talking about Taylor in Spain, and <laughs> Danielle's grandmother was like, oh, yeah, Taylor cut his hair. And I was like, yeah, it looks really weird, blah, blah, blah. He has short hair. And she's like, yeah, you know why he cut it, right? And I was like, no, I just thought he cut it because he got tired of it or something like that. He's like, she's like, no, no. He cut his hair because all of these guys kept hitting on him from behind because they thought he was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> so that is just the best. And I was just like laughing my ass off. He's a very petite figure. Oh, look. The all right. Yeah. 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 So we're going to cut it out here. <laughs> I think everybody's kind of done. I don't really have that much to talk about anyways. I can't even remember the video games I've been playing other than Rage, so. <laughs> Sundays. Yeah, it's Sunday, and we're fucking tired. So, thanks for listening. Bye! Bye.